Hello, I'm going to be grinding through the entire VIP contract from start to finish while keeping track of my time. Then I'm going to grind through the entire Cluck and Bell farm raid from start to finish again while timing myself. And then at the end, I'm going to be comparing the time spent to money earned. I'm going to be leaving the grinding gameplay completely unedited, so if you are only here for the results, there is a timestamp on screen now that you can skip to. The VIP contract starts now. We are officially on the clock. And I'm going to start here. You're going to see this computer a lot. We're going to have to use it to start all the missions until the final two. Then we can use the yellow. But I'm just going to be doing the leaks in order. So starting here with Nightlife Leak. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is grab the Agency Super Valido Helicopter. And you're going to see me using it quite a bit throughout because it is just faster to use this helicopter than to go through the loading screen, then call in my own Sparrow. Just saves a little bit of time, so that's what we're gonna be doing. And for the first mission here, we can stealth it, but stealthing it takes extra time, so we will not be stealthing it. And snacks, I'm gonna say right now, are pretty important during the VIP contract, but you can get snacks at your agency, so keep that in mind. Uh, you're always gonna wanna be pretty stocked up before starting these. Um, and I should mention that I'm going at a grinding pace, not a speedrunning pace. The whole point of this experiment is to see how long it's gonna take me to grind. So I will not be like going into first person and other things to save milliseconds. And then on top of that, uh, if I make any mistakes, if we experience any bugs or anything like that happen, they are all going to be left in because we are going for an authentic uh, experience here. Very true of a result to what you guys would see if you played through it. But yeah, we're going to be using the assault shotgun in here. I didn't need to equip it there. We could have waited till this part to equip it, but it is what it is. And we're just going to be taking out these guys. I, I don't even think you have to take them out, but... I'm just being a little bit cautious. And then we're going to just keep pushing through, taking out enemies as we go in. Not get caught on the door, hopefully. Uh, this room is a little bit more dangerous than the rest. And I actually think I uh, might have left one alive in the room that we were at earlier. But yeah, uh, the point of me using the shotgun is that we can just spray it freely. Uh, if you don't want to use the shotgun, that's fine. It's just it's easier for me, less uh, aiming required. We just kind of go in. Oh my gosh, really? But once we get the security tape, we're going to be just exiting out. And the mission is pretty much done after that. Like, this is a, a pretty short mission. And I parked the helicopter in a place that uh, you guys will see. We can get use out of it. Also, I'm snacking up before this area because these guys, when you turn the corner, can shoot at you before you even have a chance to react. I don't want to die to them. But you see where I parked? I parked, so we just had to run there. And then now we're just going here. And as long as these guys get out of their vehicle, which they are, we can just go in here. But if they stayed in their vehicle, then I'd be a little bit worried. But like I said earlier, snacks are going to be your friend throughout the VIP contract and we probably will have to refill them a couple times but that's no issue because the agency provides them for free and we walk past it all the time so it's better to just snack up than to either take extra time with enemies or uh, have to potentially restart the mission so we're gonna be using a lot of snacks but that's pretty much it for this first mission here I think there's 11 missions total, because there's three leaks, each of them have three missions, and then uh, a pre-finale, then the finale. So yeah, 11 missions, and this uh, is number one. It took us four minutes. Boom, there we go. There are going to be some cutscenes as well, some small, and as you'll see later, some long, that are all unskippable. This is one of the small ones. But uh, we aren't excluding them because it's time you're spending. Um, and any time, you know, between missions and stuff where we have to get back to the agency and whatever, we'll also be including. So I'm going to wait to not, or like I'm not going to fill up with snacks just yet. I'm going to wait till we're at a mission where we have to walk past the snacks. 
We should only have to refill snacks like maybe once or twice possibly. But yeah, we're back at the computer and the computer is pretty slow to uh, be using, but it's fine. You gotta wait for this chair animation every time. With the marina here, uh, when I get into the helicopter, I'm gonna snack up, but I'm going to be attempting something that is slightly risky and you guys will see it in a moment. But if you're a newer player just getting into the VIP contract, I wouldn't recommend what I'm about to do. Uh, wait till you've played through normally a few times first. But we're going to be going down to the dock to find a green Toro. And it's always a green Toro every time. Uh, there are different spots at the dock, but let's heal up before I forget. Uh, there's a chance we'll get attacked by the guards here. And then when we get to the yacht, we're going to want full health. So that's why we're healing up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to take the Toro. The game will instruct you to take the Toro, but we're not going to. We're going to still go down here and find it, because that part is no getting around. Uh, there it is, right there. I think it's a little bit dark. Wait, actually, which one is it? Oh, it's that one. So I'm going to try to park here. It's a little bit hard to park at the dock, and I also think... Oh, actually, you know what? That's fine. Oh, yeah, I, that's what I was going to say, is I, I think we're on that a little bit. Gotta love the movement in this game. I always got to be aiming in. But uh, there are these guys here, and if we don't take them out, then they will shoot at me. So we take them out now. Oh, come on. Don't go in the water. Okay. And then you also got to be careful with the seat selection, or you get put in the back. But after you get in here, you wait a moment, because if you get out immediately, it doesn't work. But that's good enough. And now we're going to go back. And uh, the game will want you to take the boat over to the yacht. We're going to be taking the helicopter. But something to keep in mind when you're taking the helicopter is the yacht actually has uh, anti-air defense. So you're going to want to be very careful. And you're going to see I'm going to hop out early. But you can also still get shot when you're parachuting. So you either want to go into the water and swim a bit. Or just land the parachute immediately. Because... For whatever reason, the air defense uh, like um, gets rid of parachuters as well. But we're going to enter from the back of the yacht. And I would always recommend whether you're using the boat or whatnot. Well, actually, I don't even think there is another way in if you're taking the boat. But I can't even tell if this is the front or back of it. Oh, it's the back. So yeah, we're going to hop out now. And I'm going to dive in. And then parachute now. And I actually might have parachuted a little bit too early yeah uh, and the second we hear that lock on then we're, we're dipping out of this but it's still way faster than uh, than using the boat but yeah I messed up that a little bit too fast but you hear that or hear that do you heard that uh, that's the noise of the air defense and if you hear that and you're still on your parachute then you're in trouble for this part, though, we're mostly just going to try to run through these guys. I'm not going to worry about taking them all out or anything like that. Just the ones that are a potential danger to me, which are mostly these guys. And then we're getting here. There is one guy in here as well. And then it's always in the same area. It's this right here for the, the door controls. And then we have a little bit of RNG as to where exactly the uh, documents or whatever it is that we're looking for. I forgot what they call them. But the stuff that we're looking for, uh, there's RNG as to where it's going to be spawning in. So we do have to play around that a little bit. But yeah, we're going in here. And I should probably switch to the shotgun again. You can do it with like any weapon. But there is one guy that's like really dangerous. And he's either here, yep. And sometimes he's up here, but he has a shotgun and he can and will one-shot you, if not two-shot. Uh, but ow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. We actually got it in the first one. I said ow when I meant to say wow. But yeah, uh, first location I checked. Very lucky. I think there's four different locations. And then shotgun guy is back. I'm not even risking shotgun guy. We're going to heal. I don't want to die to him. Oh my gosh, he hurt. And then there are helicopters here, but uh, we're going to ignore them. And uh, we're going to take one of these. Come on. And we're just going to drive away. 
And even though there's a helicopter there, don't take it. It's tempting, but not worth it. But yeah, we can ignore them. They have decent aim, but they shouldn't be able to kill you if you just keep driving. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep driving. And that's pretty much uh, the mission. Now, something that uh, we will be getting with some of these missions is money. And I forgot if the first one paid anything. I don't think so. I wasn't paying enough attention, though. Because we Oh, wait. It's on a cutscene. Oh, how will I even check that? Yeah, I don't know if the first one paid. I guess we're just going to say the first one didn't pay. But this one, you can see, paid 10k. Now, the last one might have paid as well, but I didn't see it, so it's like it didn't happen. But that could have just been because the cutscene blocks it. But, I mean, that's that, I guess. Maybe I'll look closer at the end and see my balance if I remember to, but it's not a big deal. Either way. We're gonna call in, oh my leg, we're gonna call in the Sparrow here, and it spawned over there. Just gonna beach this thing. And if I had called it in a bit sooner and didn't lag like I did, we could have potentially not had to run all this way, but it's whatever. It's only a couple seconds. And then uh, now we're going into our first uh, mission lobby mission. So this um, this uh, grind, you could call it, this set of missions, the VIP contract, has uh, free mode and mission lobby missions mixed together. And personally, I'm a big fan of that. It makes the uh, missions feel less repetitive because occasionally you're switching it up. So there's like two free mode setups and then a mission lobby mission, and then both the finale missions, part one and part two, are also mis mission lobby missions, so that is what it is. But uh, yeah, at the beginning here, pretty fun and exciting. We get to go into a different lobby. Uh, this one that we're going up here first for, the Nightlife League, is the easiest of them, and it can be done pretty quickly. I mean, all of these can be done pretty quickly, but I think this one is the fastest, maybe. Oh yeah, we're running past the snacks here, so we'll fill up on them now. Just like I was saying earlier, you can run right past them. Like, you have to run right past them, actually, so may as well refill. And once we get on the computer here, we're not going to be leaving the agency, and instead we're going directly into a mission lobby. So boom, boom, there we go. There's no difficulties on these, you don't gotta worry about them. Because there isn't one. And uh, there's a couple tips I have for you guys on this one. Uh, we're gonna take uh, any vehicle in the front. I'll try to remember the tips as I go. But yeah, I don't care about outfit, we're just we're going in, we're grinding. But if you guys care about outfit, it doesn't matter which one you wear. But yeah, we're just going to grab whatever vehicle. It does not matter which vehicle you use. So if you want to use your own or just use this, it, it really doesn't matter. And if I had taken the couple extra steps to get to my Karuma, it would have actually cost me time. So just grab whatever. But then we're just driving up here. And from inside the garage, we have to enter the elevator. And then when we get out of the elevator, we're going to go left, then left, then left. And, I mean, you could just follow the noise. And I actually, I think this might be copyrighted. Well, this part, I'm question marking, but when we get in there, it definitely is. Well, I'm just going to, for safety and my precaution of the video... We're just going to go ahead and mute game sounds for this. And there's a few other parts. I'll have to mute game sounds for the video. But uh, it's not you guys. It's not the video. It's just uh, I had to mute them for copyright purposes. Definitely this part. You know. Uh, and with this whole uh, VIP contract, there is quite a bit of uh, music. So this won't be the only time we're going to have to do this. But... For this part, we're just going straight to the back. Uh, it's always in the same spot. You just go through the crowd of people and uh, grab the laptop from the promoter. It never moves, so you can just take this path every single time. 
Oh, and don't get blocked by the NPCs. And then after this part, uh, I can actually bring back the game audio now. So you guys can hear again. But there's going to be a lot of enemies. And we're going to just mow through them. So with the assault shotgun. You can use other things. But it is important to uh, take them all out. You don't want them flanking you. Because if they flank you, they will destroy you. Most of them are only going to take one bullet with the assault shotgun. There's a guy right here. I could be going faster. Uh, we're also going to snack up before I die. This guy was the threat. But we're almost out of this area. You can go faster than that, but you risk dying, so I wouldn't recommend. And then we're going to go left, then right, then right again. And just like before, but this time we're going to be a bit more spammy because we're just knocking them to the ground, making sure they can't do damage to me. And then the guy will make it so we can't really shoot that one back there, but now we can. And then there's going to be one guy from behind me, but we're not going to deal with him. Instead, I just snacked up in case he shoots. He is trying to shoot, but usually he doesn't do any damage, so snacked up regardless. This next area is quite a bit more dangerous than the other areas. Uh, if you're not full health already, I would recommend being full health. Just because there is limited visibility with this. So you can see like the lights are in the way and then it's also dark. So there's a chance you uh, don't know where you're getting attacked from. And also... Be prepared to use those snacks. I'm trying to hit this guy. But yeah, you can see they're hiding in plain sight. But it's not exactly plain sight because of the limited vision that we have down here. You don't have to kill this guy, but he's free RP. So, may as well. And then, we're going to leave the music locker um, back out through the garage. And we're taking the garage because there's vehicles in there that we can use to just go back to the agency. And uh, if you shoot the, um, the vehicle window, it doesn't matter which vehicle you grab. If you shoot the window, you can just hop right in versus having to break the uh, window. But that's not just this mission. That just applies to GTA in general, if you guys didn't know. And then we have the invisible car for a second. That was fun. These guys aren't that big of a threat. Just drive past them. And then depending on your agency location, which by the way, I recommend using the location that I have if you're going to grind this. Um, you have to drive back to your agency. I should have mentioned that sooner, by the way, that some of these things are um, agency-based, like location. So you should definitely have uh, one that's around where mine is or mine exactly but there's another 10k as well as some rp but we're not going to be calculating the rp we're just here for the money and i'm imagining most people probably aren't grinding rp i'm sure there's some people specifically grinding it but that's not where we're tracking here and we'll try to get in here duplicate myself shortly if you do it fast enough that happens every time if we uh, need more snacks, which I think we might because we use quite a bit there, we can refill. Because once again, we're walking right past that area. So, may as well. And then we're headed back to the computer here to start the next leak. Which, what is the next leak? The, yeah, I don't know the name of it. It's not the South Central leak. The High Society League, that's what it is, of course. In the Country Club, you're uh, going to the same area every time. It's up to you if you want to keep your stealth or not. For me, I'm not going to be keeping my stealth. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, if you want to, also, you can use the Buzzard or, uh, or Sparrow or anything with homing missiles for this mission to uh, make the second part of it a little bit easier. I'll explain more in detail about that when we get to that point. But I'm just using the Super Bleedo and gonna rely on my own ability to find that when it comes to it. 
But to start here, we're going to the Country Club. It is always this location that you go to. Uh, but when we get there, there's three different doors or two, um, and they have cameras around them. The cameras can all be avoided by climbing up on the rooftop and uh, just going in front. You can't shoot out the cameras, but you can go around them. We're not going to be because we're saving a couple seconds. Uh, but you do have to make sure the waypoint uh, is reached, so as much as I would love to just run right into the door there, whichever door it is, I actually can't tell just yet. We're going to have to land right here, so I land the same place every time, just to make sure we hit that waypoint. Like right here. There we go. And unfortunately, it is the door in the back, which, eh, you know, I guess we can stealth just because it's the farthest one away from where I parked, but... It doesn't matter if you stealth or not, but I'll show you guys just in case you are wanting to stealth it for yourself. Just go like this, and then if we could just hop off here, and then once again, you're just avoiding those cameras, and then we hack this. This hack is the stopping hack. No, it's 42.45, and I already see it, but I'm, oh my gosh, it is so hard to do this on a controller. The uh, joystick really sends those uh, those numbers flying. But since we kept our stealth here, you know, they, they don't know we're coming. But if they do know you're coming, it's not that different. Uh, it doesn't matter which of these you go to access. All of them work. But we're going my computer, external, brute force, and then this is the stopping act. So all you're doing is stopping the red letters on the blue line. There we go. And then you're done in this area. Now you gotta leave, go back out to your helicopter, but unfortunately you gotta wait for Imani to stop talking. And now this is the part where you may want a vehicle that has homing missiles on it. Come on. Stop talking, Imani. We need to go. There we go. Now we're just running back to the helicopter. And we're going to be going to an area, it's a search area, oh, and it's raining, of course. It's a search area for the limo. And uh, if you don't know all the limo spawns, which I gotta say, I don't even think with 100% confidence that I know all the limo spawns, so. <laughs> uh, it's probably better just to use something that has homing missiles on it. Because when you fly over the area, the uh, homing will uh, lock on to the limousine making it very easy to find. But depending on the search area we get, there's a chance we'll have to get out and walk a little bit. Otherwise, we will just land right on the limo. And we're gonna be taking out the limo uh, driver. Now you can alternatively just follow the limo driver, but I'm not going to be. And I actually think for, in terms of where my agency is, this is probably the best RNG for the limo. But we'll have to see. Like I said, I don't think I know all the spawn locations, but I know one can be somewhere down here. It would be in this parking lot? I don't know. There's also a spot down here. This is the one, unfortunately, we're gonna have to get out and check. I was letting you guys know about a second ago. But we'll see really quick if the limo's in here. We can't really check without going in deeper, so is it? Yes, it is. So we couldn't land the uh, helicopter right on it, but we're just taking out this guy and then grabbing his wallet. Come on. Sometimes it's a little bit silly not letting you grab that stuff right away. But now we just go back to the uh, agency again and that's the mission let me see if these missions are paying anything I've never really paid enough attention so we have 10,000 cash and uh, it wouldn't be much if we'd be getting so we have 12,000 in uh, at the end of our total there <laughs> I'm not gonna read out the whole number but 10k cash 10k 12k those change, then we're getting paid. But because it's cutscenes, you don't see the money being added. 
10k 12k yeah if we got paid it'd be right there with our rp but our rp goes over the uh cut scene but let's see 10k 12k uh oh wow we did we got uh another 10k for that yeah so i guess these missions pay 10k as well we're gonna have to definitely add that to the total because we're up to 22k so yeah that's another 10k I guess the other one probably paid 10k as well then. I'm guessing they all do. I'd be a little bit surprised if it was different. But now we're going for a guest list. And with this one, uh, it is again a, a dangerous mission. So we're gonna put on armor. But uh, you can take a sparrow or something with missiles if you want to go that way, but you have to know where you're shooting so you don't accidentally shoot the uh, the lawyer. So I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend grabbing this and then parking on a building nearby and sniping the enemies, but we're going to be taking a more direct approach. So uh, yeah, we're going to be charging on in there. I should probably put armor on. Sometimes armor can make that little bit of difference, but if we need to, we'll be using snacks. So I'm just going to land the helicopter right in front here. And hopefully the helicopter doesn't fall on me. Now we're fine. And I'm taking just a, a straightforward aggressive approach. Oh wait, we can't go through here. What am I doing? Yeah, there we go. Lost our weapon. We'll re-equip that though. And now we're going to go through and take out all these guys. You have to take out all the enemies, by the way. It is a requirement. So we'll just clear them all out. Try to hit headshots when I can. Here, we'll take our time with that guy. Just so I'm not wasting a bunch of ammo and having to reload. And then we're going to hop down, but I'm going to take out who I can from back here. I think that's about it. And then I'm gonna hop down from over here because it's safer to hop down over here than it is there. Uh, no enemies in the direct path. Be careful who you're shooting, by the way. There is a guy you are not supposed to shoot. Oh my gosh, these are all on your head, bro. And I don't think that's all, but we'll know where they are after going over here. Oh, I guess that was all. So then you pull out your stun gun, and then you get this guy. I'm surprised that was all of them. That did not feel like all. Now, uh, when you do this part, you have to be very cautious, as there will be enemy NPCs coming out of vehicles, and this car, if I'm being completely honest, is terrible. So getting away from them is not exactly an option, especially not in the rain. So you can see they, they're pretty dangerous. And by pretty dangerous, I mean they killed me. Uh, if I had snacked up and put on armor, that wouldn't have happened. But the, the amount of time we're losing from this is going to be about the same amount of time as if we stopped and fought them. So it does suck that I died there. But it also could have been avoided. I knew it was coming. I just was being silly. Uh, if you really want to consider it a time loss, then it's just this time while running back. Which is pretty much nothing, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, but not enough that we're going to make a, a big deal out of it. It happens. Like I said earlier, we're leaving all mistakes in. But we could definitely have made a way bigger mistake than that. I should have just been snacking up, though. Easily avoided. Very easily. Also, there is, I forgot to mention it, there is RNG to this mission as to which location the uh, the mission spawns at and for uh, our RNG here we actually got pretty good RNG with how close it is to uh, my agency so keep that in mind even if we lost that 20 seconds there we probably made up for it in RNG but just like the uh, clock and bell farm raid the RNG that happens in the VIP contract is not that much. 
It's nothing like the KO Perico heist where it's more RNG dependent. But yeah, that's that mission done. Would have been a lot cooler if we uh, did it flawlessly, but that's grinding, you know? Sometimes mistakes happen while grinding. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm perfect. I don't think anyone's perfect, and if anyone thinks they're perfect, I mean, maybe they are at certain things, but there's always going to be things that uh, you make mistakes, but you learn from your mistakes, so <laughs> next time I do that, I'll be a little bit more cautious, and you move on. That's just, that's how life is. Life and grinding have that in common. And we could refill on snacks here again. Oh, where is my character going? Interesting. But I'm not going to refill on snacks. I think we're good. I think we're fine on snacks. And actually, I think uh, we're going back into another uh, mission lobby. Also, did we get another 10k there? We did. So yeah, I think all the setup missions pay 10k, exactly. Good to know. Yeah, high society leak. We're going into a mission lobby mission again. Gonna purchase that super heavy armor. And then we're going. This is probably the longest and hardest uh, mission lobby mission. Might even be more so than the finale. Like, in, in terms of difficulty. But I'm going to show you guys some things you can do to make it a little bit easier. So to start here, you are in the lawyer's car. And I would recommend, honestly, just taking the lawyer's car over. But uh, we aren't going to be doing that the whole time. We're actually going to be calling in the armored Karuma. And if you have uh, any other slightly armored vehicles, I mean, obviously the armored Karuma is the best, but... If you have other armored vehicles, I would recommend it for this. If you don't, though, no worries. Just uh, park the vehicle in a place that you can hide behind and stay on foot. It's no big deal, though, if you uh, don't have it. But if you don't have the armored Karuma and you want to do more grinding and stuff, I definitely recommend it. I think it's only like 500k. It's definitely worth. So as we get up a bit closer here, we'll... Call in the Karuma. And I can't remember if this is the first one we're going to be using it at. Is this our first time using the Karuma? I don't know. Hopefully it's my active vehicle. But yeah, you're going to reach this point. Open the gates with the code. And there are Karumas down there. So we're just going to go drive over to that. You could also just leave the vehicle there. But we're not going to. We're going to save a couple seconds. Do this. And hopefully it puts me in the right one. Nice. And then we're just going in. We're attacking. And you're going to keep attacking these guys. We can even do this if we're really worried about it. But oh well. Um, and then it's actually saying go to the lawyer's car. But we're fine. Uh, you don't need to take out everyone, just the NPCs that fight back. And then, once you feel a little bit safe, I'd recommend blowing up these vehicles for progress. I might have actually parked the Armored Karuma a little bit too close. But you need most of these destroyed for the progress. And then, once they're destroyed, we can get up here to change the mission objective. And now we're just going to be running around and taking out the enemies as they spawn in. The Armored Karuma has pretty uh, weird angles that you can shoot from. There's a helicopter that's going to be coming in. Actually, it's already here. Uh, it is a very scary helicopter, though. So if you're not in the Karuma, be very careful around it. It will destroy you. And uh, eventually a bar will pop up once Amani stops talking. With our progress of how many people we need to take out. The angles on the Karuma that you can shoot from are a bit odd, to say the least. So, if they could show me the progress, I would know how many more guys we need to take out. But we're definitely not done. There's still a lot here. Okay, yeah. We need to take out quite a few more, but... Uh, 
when you see the bar, you want it almost like 99% full before the next step. So just keep taking out enemies and filling up that bar. And when you're in the uh, Kuruma, you're pretty safe. So you can just drive around to the enemies if they don't immediately peek. Okay, that was a headshot, but cool. I guess we were too far away or something. So it didn't count it. Okay, so we're... When you hear Amani talking about that, you're getting close. Uh, but we're gonna want to kill probably one more guy, then go back. There's a lot of guys here. Okay, yeah. So that's like 99%, I'd say. Oh, it's actually perfect we got this guy here. And then we're gonna drive out here, park the Karuma a little bit ahead, switch to the minigun. And I mean, there's other options, but I'd prefer minigun. Wait for this guy to get back up because we couldn't take him out. Oh, and I guess we weren't 99. We need to take out one more, but no big deal. There should be someone that I shoot somewhere. What? Okay, I guess one blood out or something. But once the bar is full, just make sure you're in the area that I'm at if you want to have an easy time with this helicopter and don't want to chase it forever. And then I'm going to go a little bit up here and just be uh, aiming as high up as I can and shooting the helicopter as it passes. And then when it's out of the range, we switch to the sniper and, you know, miss a shot because of recoil. But it's no big deal if you miss. You have a, quite a bit of time, as long as you mini-gunned. One more shot should do it. Nice. And now we're just taking the armor Karuma on down to where the helicopter is going to crash. If you haven't played this mission before, you can just uh, follow the helicopter like the game instructs you to do. But I already know where it's going to crash, so we'll try to get there before it does. But um, usually I get by, uh, by like the uh, Zancudo Bridge. And then it crashes. But yeah, uh, not the cleanest snipes by me, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> you know, missing that large of a target. A bit rough. Uh, and also our minigun spray probably should have done more damage than it did, but oh well. Neither of those things really affected too much. Nice part about the Karuma is if you crash into NPCs with it. They're just forced out of your way completely because it's such a, a hefty vehicle. And we're almost to the point where the cutscene's going to play. Not quite all the way there yet, but almost. I wonder if I'm even going to make it to the bridge. I'm gonna try. But yeah, I was a little bit slow this time with the snipes, like I said. Ah! Uh, I almost crashed into that guy. Okay, we made it to the bridge. So yeah, this is about normal for me. And then any moment, uh, a cutscene is gonna play, and the helicopter is gonna go down. Like, literally any moment. Yeah, there we go. And it's crashing just a little bit farther. We have to drive a, a, just a tiny bit more. But there's a ramp here you can take to uh, get down. It even lights it up, making it obvious. So you can find it easy peasy. And then we're going over here. You have to go to the, the billionaire, take him out. I just take him out by running him over. He's pretty much dead already. You get out of your vehicle, collect this, get back in. And then there's two possible aircraft spawns, just to save time. If you don't care about saving time, you can drive the Kuruma back. But there will be enemies chasing you, so I wouldn't recommend driving back unless you have an armored vehicle. But yeah, you can either get sparrows, um, like the water sparrows, I forgot their names are, or these. And I think these are Tulas. Oh, come on. I did not. I did not do that. But yeah, as you can see, the, the enemies are surrounding me. We're going to put this into uh, 
Yeah, this is the Tula. We're going to put this into uh, helicopter mode or whatever you call this. And then we'll switch to plane mode after we get a little bit of height, just because the Tula is a bit slow. Just for takeoff purposes. There we go. Should be fine now. And we're just going back to the agency. And the other uh, aircraft spawn is at this. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a second to show you guys. It's right here, right where I'm shooting. So if you check the first area, and there isn't anything there, just go to that area. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this mission. I think this is the longest mission, other than one that has a unskippable cutscene. But yeah, we're 40 and a half minutes in. I think majority of the time that I grind out these missions, it's around an hour and a half. I don't know if I've ever, like, actually put myself on the clock, though. But I've done it enough times to know, like, how long it takes me. Because I'll, like, check the time, and then, you know, an hour and a half later, I'm done. So, that's what I'm going for here. If I, uh, go, like, to an hour 40 plus, then I guess we did a slower run, and if we're under an hour 30, then a little bit faster than my usual. But, uh, overall, this, uh, the VIP contract has a lot of just parts that I enjoy. Like, I enjoy, uh, going in there, taking out all those guys, and then being able to fly back in a mission lobby mission, just something you don't get to do that often. For this part, we're gonna hop out and parachute down. We're actually, uh, jumping out a little bit late, but that's fine. Parachute a bit early just to be cautious, because I don't want to have to, uh, re-pick up the phone, because if you die during this mission, you gotta go back and collect the phone again. But, there we go. Mission is done. But yeah, just a overall fun series of missions. I also like the South Central League finale one. That one's fun. We haven't done it yet. We'll get there. Uh, we got 16k for that. We're gonna have to, or I'm gonna have to do all the, the math at the end for the, uh, the results, the summary, but I'm not keeping track of that stuff now. I'll just look at it when I'm editing, figure it out from there. Oh, and I was able to duplicate myself again. You guys saw that. I don't know if we used any snacks during that mission. I don't think we did, but I'll refill on snacks. Yeah, we didn't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for uh, that mission, if you don't have an armored crew, well, you're definitely going to need snacks. But the armored crew is just so nice. But yeah, now we're on to the final leak, which is the South Central leak. And for the first mission here, the Investigation Davis, we are going to be taking the Super Valido yet again. Have I taken it for all of them? I think so. Actually, I think I take it for all of them. Now, I've never really thought much about it, but yeah. Just uh, become best friends with the Agency Super Valido to save time while grinding. <laughs> Ugh. But yeah, we're flying down into the city a bit to meet up with Vernon. And we're going to Strawberry for this one. There's a, a few different spots. And uh, we're going to be doing quite a bit of fighting on these next couple missions. It's going to be a lot of enemies. But we'll be able to take it out no problem because I'll show you guys how we do it. Be careful not to land on him. And we're going to be the driver. Can you get in, please? And I think this one we go to the right. I could be wrong. Okay, yeah. Nice. Save like an extra couple seconds just by already driving in the way of it. Uh, when you get to the location here of the deal, uh, I would recommend finding a vantage point. If you're not confident in your abilities and taking out the enemies from a vantage point but because we're just doing it as i would typically grind it i'm just going to play it how i play it which is just going in aggressive but if you're not confident in your abilities 
then definitely find a vantage point. There's vantage points at all the locations that you can use. I think Rockstar did it purposely for people that struggle with that type of stuff. So with this one, I believe you get on, yeah, on that roof right there. But I'm just going to be charging in. And we're going to take out all of these guys. Every single one of them. I'm trying to hit headshots the best I can. What? Oh wait, those are those are my guys. <laughs> I'm shooting at the wrong people. Is that it? No, there's one more. Where is this guy? Oh, he's here. Okay. Uh, and when Vernon's inside, you're going to get inside... Wait for the lost MC to spawn. Then take them out as they come. Actually, you know what? Let's let's not do that on this location. Uh, there's a there's a method you can lose the cops and everything really easily by just uh, taking them out. But we're gonna drive away instead. And I'm actually driving the wrong way right now. But Vernon will cover you. We just need to get into uh into an area to lose them now i mean technically you could just lose them as you're driving but i'm gonna go down here might be slightly easier and after you escape the loss you then have to lose the police next oh wow <laughs> we landed on that vehicle it's kind of funny but yeah, I could have done it the boring way, where I, uh, like where you're just sitting there, but I thought this would be a little bit more of something, because that strategy is mostly afk Uh You know, let's just run past them. Oh well. We're in a really slow van, so that's why I don't typically do this, but it is fine if you want to. But we're pretty much going to pretend we're playing the Diamond Casino Heist. To lose the cops just because like I said we're in a really slow van it is only a two-star so you don't gotta do this but that's what I'm doing <laughs> uh. and since they followed me all the way here it's gonna take a moment we're gonna have to get a little bit deeper uh, should we back out of this uh, yeah, we'll we'll leave out the way we came, but you could just keep driving down. But yeah, uh, I guess since we're sitting here losing the cops, I'll explain. So you, uh, before driving away with the van like I did, you get in it. The lost MC spawn. You take you uh, take out the lost MC as they come, uh, helping your friendlies stay alive. And then when um, you get a wanted level. You put away your weapons and go back to um, a hiding spot. Your friendlies will fight the cops for you, buying you enough time to lose the police there. Then you get into the, the van and drive to the drop-off like we're doing now. So you pretty much just skip the whole chase with that route. But the thing is, it's boring. It's a lot of just sitting and waiting in one spot. And because I'm recording, I didn't want to do that <laughs> that's pretty much it the game is telling me to go up here i thought maybe the game knew something i didn't i trusted you game i trusted you but we'll instead just be going up uh actually wait maybe i should have listened to the game oh no no here we go i'm dumb <laughs> oh i was like wait why is that not the spot i, I was just like 20 feet away from the spot I was intending on going up. But yeah, the van is very slow, as you can see, which is why I didn't want to uh, go on a chase, even though it was just a two-star. That's why we hid in the sewers like we did. But obviously, uh, you could avoid the entire chase by just doing the, the way I was explaining earlier. By the way, I have guides for, uh, they're not meant for, like, normal grinders, they're meant for people struggling with these missions, but, uh, if you are struggling with them, there is an entire playlist on my channel for VIP contract guides, and there we go, we got 2k for good behavior, nice, 
We're not counting that, though. That 2K for good behavior is just is what it is. It doesn't get counted towards our total earned because we didn't grind for it. We're just playing the game, just existing, and we get it. But, yeah, uh, this mission, I think, always takes a bit longer just because of how slow the van is. But we could have also kept driving through the sewers and gotten out. Uh, somewhere around here. I forgot where they come. I think it's at the next thing somewhere. Uh, I don't know the exact spot, but and saved a little bit of time with that. But we didn't, so it is what it is. Is that where it is? I don't even know. No, it's this. Or maybe it was that. No, okay, it was that. It was the one we passed back there. It had to have been. But depending on the location of the mission that you get, you'll get different drop-offs. We actually got bad RNG with this one. There's a there's one that um, the drop-off is right next to my agency, like literally walking distance. So if we had gotten good RNG on that, we would have saved about two miles of this drive, probably. So that would have probably saved us like a minute or two with how slow this thing is, but... We're fine. Uh, it is what it is, part of the grinding. But yeah, we got Vernon to look for the leak. The next mission gets a little bit, uh, a little bit more wild though. Uh, we're gonna look this way, and then it should spawn to the left, hopefully. No, it didn't. Yikes! It actually spawned behind us. So that's like an extra five seconds of walking. Kind of. Uh, unlucky there but we're going back to the agency and if you use a helicopter uh, any helicopter buzzard sparrow if you somehow still have the super Valido to go back to your agency then you don't got to get out of your vehicle and wait for that animation while walking in instead you can just land up top which is just personal preference but not something you have to do But I think the other drop would be like right in this cluster. Yeah, right right in the middle of that cluster of uh, buildings is where the other drop location is that we could have gotten if we had better RNG. And as you can see, my agency is right next door. <laughs> so that would have helped a little bit, but not the biggest deal. I don't think we used any snacks, but we're definitely going to be using snacks on this next mission. For this next one, I have a few tips for you guys, but I'd rather wait till we get to actually doing them to be able to talk about it more. But this is uh, one of the more difficult missions if you don't know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, then it's easy peasy. But we are now going for Investigation the Balas. Just like every other time, we're going to leave out of the Agency Super Valido. And this is actually the last uh, free mode mission. So, yeah, I guess every single one we took the Super Valido. I never really thought about that much. But, yeah, all the free mode missions are probably best off taking the Super Valido. Um, and then we're going to go meet with Vernon. Very similarly to the other one. It's a few different... Uh, actually, no, is there different spawn points yeah there's two two different spawn points for this one there's a gas station and then there's the cul-de-sac and i don't know if this spot affects the um the other location but if it does then we got the cul-de-sac mission but as i'm driving i'm gonna heal up to full i don't necessarily know if you have to be at full for this if you're good enough, you will probably be fine, not at full. But uh, what we're going to be doing here is dropping off Vernon and then leaving him in the middle of the battlefield. We're not going to help him. We are leaving him. This mission does not require you to take out anyone. Uh, this mission is just about fighting for a certain period of time and I think that period of time is like one minute maybe two minutes 
So don't feel the need to go out and try to be a hero and fight the unlimited NPCs that'll be after you. Instead, we are gonna be dropping him off and then getting in our sparrow and waiting for the timer. So you can already hear the fighting. Now is when we're gonna be going in here and pulling over here. Sparrow's behind us. And we might have to take out these guys if they follow me. They actually got out there, which is nice. So we'll have a, a safe entry into the Sparrow. And we're, we're taking a helicopter because we're going to use it to get back to the agency later. But there's a rooftop right here, actually, that you can just chill. Now, if you don't have a helicopter, you stay in the... Um, the cavalcade, I think is what it is, that we were driving earlier. And uh, you just drive around in circles, waiting for the timer. And there will be enemy vehicles that come after you, but just ignore them the best you can. Just keep driving in circles. Don't run to the other side of the map, though. Stay around this area. But since we use the Sparrow, we just go up here, we chill. We could, uh, like, if you're, like, really bored or impatient, you can just, like, snipe. For, for no reason other than to snipe. But if you do, you're also putting yourself at a slight risk because if you can see them, they can see you. But if you stay where I am here, and just, you know, jump on your helicopter, then you're safe. And then I think the timer should be getting closer to done, so we'll get back in here. Uh, when the police come, yeah, there they are. You can see them above me. That is when it's going to change. The moment we get a wanted level, I'll actually just start coming over here now because it's about to happen you can see the helicopter showed up and there we go we got a wanted level now uh, they'll be ceasing fire and running away uh, and all you need to do is be close enough to Vernon I actually can't see Vernon is he already on his path which one of you is Vernon oh there he is yeah, you got to be kind of close to him but you don't have to be, like, touching him. And you're going to just follow him along this path. And the cops, like, they can interfere, but they usually don't until you land. Uh, I think we're close enough now to actually land. Close enough to Vernon, that is. So we're going to land the Sparrow right here. And we're going to have to take out these cops that are being annoying. And then Vernon will be like, hey, that's blood. Look at that. And then we're going to go right there. Oh, he actually didn't take that long that time. I feel like usually he takes longer at that part. We're just going to stand here. And now we're just... It's essentially a cutscene in here, but it's not a cutscene. So you can just go in the corner here. This is what I usually do. And if you're able to get into the corner, sometimes you can ragdoll. I think you gotta land in here. Yeah. Come on. Do it. Come on. There's a spot that we can get a ragdoll going, but I'm kind of failing at it right now. But yeah, you're just you're waiting for Vernon to stop talking. And then it automatically kicks you out of here. So you don't even gotta go to the door or anything. Come on, can we at least hit one rig doll? Usually I'm able to hit like a few. Ah, no, they're kicking us out. But yeah, that's the spot anyway where you can rig doll. Sometimes if you're good enough at it. Which I'm slowly getting better the more and more I play this mission. But yeah, once that's done, you can see we already called in the sparrow. Already parked it right there. And we're just leaving the area, and I think that's another 10k, because they all were paying 10k. Yeah, 10k. Wow. So, every single one of the free mode VIP contract missions pays 10k. And there's six free mode ones, so that's 60k. The mission lobby ones pay different amounts, because it's a mission lobby, so it's based on how long it takes you to do those missions. So those will vary with every run you do. And then uh, the finale, as you'll see later, will pay.
pay a million, but I'm guessing most of you already knew that. And I think you still get paid for your time on the uh, the pre-setup as well. I don't think we used any snacks. Or actually, we did, but not enough to where I'm going to refill them. And now we're actually to the last mission that we're going to have to use the computer for. So everyone say bye-bye to the computer because after this we're going to be going into a yellow circle instead. Bye-bye computer. Won't miss you. <laughs> you waste my time. Uh, I don't know why I bought the, uh, the ammo there. We didn't need it. Oh well. I was just trying to buy armor. So uh, this mission, one of the the more easy ones, just like the first one. And I'll show you how to make sure that it's easy. Because if you don't know what you're doing, just like other ones, it can be hard. So we're just going to be taking this. It doesn't matter if you take this or, you know, a Karuma or anything. It doesn't matter what vehicle you drive pretty much. Well, correction, it might matter slightly if you take a really small vehicle like a bike or something. Then you'll have trouble. So just take a normal car, SUV, truck, anything like that. And we, we failed the stomp jump, but it doesn't matter because I've already completed them all. But that is like a, a two second time loss because I landed upside down. Uh, so now we're, we're going this way. Um, actually, I was thinking of a different mission. I'm not going to lie. What I was just doing there, I was thinking of a different mission. <laughs> so yeah, uh, ignore ignore me taking that stunt jump there. I was in my own head. I was, I was thinking about something completely else. Uh, so yeah, just keep driving down here. I guess I took that for fun. And then when you regroup with them, uh, you get slowed down. You can go a little bit in front of them, but you don't want to go all the way in front or the mission fails. So when they say stay close, they mean it. Uh, again, I'm going to have to mute the audio, though, for copyright. Uh, this ain't the turn. The next one is. But we we got to stay pretty close to them. Yeah, you can see return to the convoy. Even this is too far. It's still telling me to, but I'm not that worried. And then we're not going to fight immediately. We're actually going to uh, be going back to our vehicle and positioning it a certain way and you'll see why later but we're going to make that a priority so we're going to go over here get back in this and where you see these potholes in the road you're going to line up your two tires with the two potholes pretty much and then now you're good to start fighting and we're using the laser gun because that's what it gave me, and we don't have to reload with it. These enemies are pretty weak. Doesn't mean you can ignore them, you still need cover. Uh, but there are a lot of them, so... Using a gun with unlimited ammo saves on the whole... needing to reload thing. But you can use any weapon for this. Uh, what we're gonna do, though, is pull out the compact EMP launcher and shoot that vehicle right there. And we're going to just keep taking out these guys until we get cutscened, snack up when needed, and eventually the cutscene will play. This guy is in an annoying spot. I think he's actually dead. Okay, we should be about done. You don't need a compact EMP launcher, that thing, by the way. Oh, he's still alive. I thought he was dead. Okay, these are just the last guys. But, yeah. Uh, if you compact EMP launcher, it helps a little bit. But if you park your vehicle correctly, you don't need the compact EMP launcher at all. Your vehicle will do it all for you. So you see he's stopped there, and he's not able to drive away for two reasons. The first reason, because we compact EMP launchered him. And the second is because we parked our vehicle there. Uh, and now I can bring back the audio for you guys, because the music is finally done. It was kind of loud, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and by the way, that's with my music off in the settings. They unfortunately uh, bypass it with these uh, missions from the VIP contract. And with the uh, 
Diamond Casino Heist finale, they also bypass it as well, which is pretty annoying. It makes uh, this type of stuff unable to be live streamed without getting DMCA'd. Just because there's no way to uh, get rid of it. Unless you mute sounds completely on GTA, which is what I think live streamers usually do. But uh, after you have hold of the low rider, you're just you're driving it back to the agency. Nothing more to it. There are enemies, but as long as you aren't uh, going super slow, they can't keep up with you anyway. And uh, yeah, that's that mission done. And now we're on to the last two missions that'll both be at the yellow circle. And we are hour five minutes in. The next mission will have an unskippable cutscene. We got 10k clean from that. And the unskippable cutscene, of course, does add time. Quite a bit of time, actually. But we'll get to that when we get to that. It'll give me plenty of time to talk about it and that type of stuff. Oh, we're not going to duplicate ourselves this time. No, because I messed up a bit and went over the rail. Unfortunate. But uh, we did use some snacks there. I'm going to make sure to stock up to full. This will be the last time we stock up. And then instead of going to the computer, we can just go right in here, which I wish was the case for all the missions because look how much faster that is than going over sitting on the chair, waiting for the chair animation, and then going on the computer and doing all that. So what you're going to do is hop inside Dre's car waypoint the yellow waypoint exit the car and grab yourself an armor karuma or the uh the agency vehicle there if you don't have the karuma uh you are going to want to take the agency vehicle and use it on a staircase in a back alley to get up to the rooftops which then you will take out the enemies from the rooftops uh, I would show that if this was a guide video, but this is just a grinding, so you're going to have to try your best to figure it out just on what I told you there, or check out my guides that are, uh, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll link them in, in the description, the playlist for the VIP contract, hopefully I remember. But uh, yeah, if you have the Karuma, you can just go in here, but it'd be in there, you'd be going otherwise. So we're taking out all these guys, and if you're in the Karuma, you can just charge right at them. And uh, after taking out the first bunch, they will start coming from up there. And we're actually going to go and do this. We're going to park in the middle here, pull out my minigun. Oh, I pulled out the minigun weapon wheel. Weapon wheel! Weapon wheel almost got me killed there. Uh, oh no. Oh no, this could be bad. This could be bad. Did the weapon wheel get me killed? Go, 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 go! Get away from that. Kuruma cannot survive explosions. But uh, yeah, the weapon wheel works fine. You're able to take out the other two vehicles as well. Or I think it sometimes it's three. I don't know the exact amount. But unfortunately, because the weapon wheel didn't work, we now got to spend this extra time taking out a couple extra guys without the minigun. Just because it's not safe for me to be running at them normally. But when they're all done, you just go to record A. And then uh, this is a very dangerous part. So if you don't have remaining armor and stuff, make sure to put it on. Uh, and then there should be enemies. There they are. They were just a little bit delayed. Uh, you're going to want to make sure to go all the way here and take out all of them. Is there one in here? No. I don't think there ever is, but can't hurt to check if I'm not sure. And then you're going to just mow through them all. And if you have the auto shotgun like this, you can spend more time shooting, less time aiming. Which I would definitely recommend. Snack up to full as well. Very helpful. Oh, and uh, something's going on with my phone. Uh, some sort of emergency, but we're going to try to get into this cutscene first hope that emergencies aren't uh, completely terrible. <laughs> so sorry about that. Just a bad time to be recording. But once we get into the cutscene, I will look. And I think we can actually go into it now. 
There we go. So this is a very long unskippable cutscene. And we'll check. It was an amber alert on my phone. So hopefully they they figure that out. Um, but yeah, while you're doing this cutscene, or while this is happening, uh, you have about five minutes. I think the cutscene's around five minutes exactly. A little bit longer, a little bit less. I can't remember. Uh, I'm including this in the time, but if you're grinding this, this is a perfect time to use the bathroom. Go say hi to someone else in your house or whatever. Uh, you know, text that friend that you've been waiting to text. Uh, watch a YouTube video. Get a bite to eat. Get some water. You know, actually, I'm going to take a sip of water. Any of that type of stuff. You have five minutes. So just use it as you please. And if you guys are watching the grinding, I would recommend just skipping ahead unless you want to listen to me rant for five minutes. <laughs> but I mean, if you're here for it, you're here for it. I'm leaving it in unedited because uh, the integrity of the, uh, the experiment, we can't just exclude this. And the audio will be muted as well because it's copyrighted music again. I think I was able to play it a little bit, but definitely not this part and majority of this cutscene. But yeah, so we're one hour, 10 minutes in now, almost one hour, 11, and I think around one hour, 15 is when it will be done. But uh, yeah, honestly, a pretty interesting cutscene. One of the best cutscenes in GTA Online, in my opinion. Uh, it would still be nice to be able to skip it, though, because once you play this, uh, the VIP contract enough, you have it memorized. It doesn't make it like a bad cutscene just because you have to watch it. It's just... It's annoying is all, that you have to keep watching something. But yeah, a uh, pretty interesting cutscene. Definitely wish they would do uh, more creative cutscenes like this in the game. But next time, make them skippable after the first time. Like, I completely understand making a, a cutscene non-skippable for the first time someone's playing it. But when you're replaying, like, I honestly think they just left this in as unskippable to, um, to make it like take longer they're like if you have to grind the vip contract we're gonna nerf it by making them sit through this i guess it's also worth mentioning that there is a glitch to skip this and while i am very very against glitches for uh, any reason other than you know like bugs and stuff if they happen to you uh, but glitches and stuff to gain an advantage i never would recommend doing ever and they can uh, uh, as always you're breaking rockstar's uh, terms of service so you are risking your account but that being said i'm not going to ignore the fact that there is a glitch to skip this cutscene and i'm not going to tell you guys how to do it either but i'm just letting you know it exists so that's something <laughs> but uh yeah really cool cutscene and I wish I didn't have to mute the audio. I wish it wasn't copyright. Because uh, if you guys have not seen this cutscene, it's definitely worth a watch. I know there's a lot of places on YouTube to find it too, by the way. Even if you don't want to play through the game yourself, give this cutscene a, a check out in, uh, in just YouTube. I think if you just type in uh, Dr. Dre VIP contract GTA Online, it's like one of the top results. But yeah, very, very cool cutscene. Very cool. I think we have like a minute and a half on it. But yeah, you could uh, you could do anything during this time. Except for continue to grind. You can't do anything inside of GTA Online. I meant in real life, but you can go on your phone. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and just name things you could do. Because there's so many. It's literally... Five minutes. You, you have five minutes. Dang, I'm just sitting here enjoying this, though. Really, really cool cutscene. And after this, there's only one more mission. We're on to the finale. And the finale is really easy as well. If you have the armored Karuma. And you take the route I do. If you try to go at it normally, it, it actually might be the hardest part of this whole entire thing. Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, it was about 30 seconds less than I thought it was going to be. But there we go. 
Cutscene's done. We got 7,500 for it. Not for the cutscene, for the mission. <laughs> I mean, uh, the cutscene's part of the mission, so yeah. We got paid 7,500 for the cutscene, guys. Grinding cutscenes. And now we have to go back to our agency. So we're just gonna call in the Sparrow. And it doesn't matter which way we look because we're surrounded by Sparrow uh, spawn locations there. But yeah, we're almost done. We're very close to the end. One final mission. And if that mission plus loading time uh, takes 15 minutes, then we'll be exactly at what I guessed for the total time it takes to grind. For me, at least. I know uh, speed running and stuff with this, uh, with the VIP contract can be done way faster, but like I said, we're grinding, not speed running. So this is just how I play through. And you guys can take your own routes too. Uh, I've just been explaining everything I do for people who need help with it or, you know, are interested in what I'm doing. So yeah, last one here. Again, the yellow circle. Don't mess with Dre. Let's go. Feels nice to have uh, reached the finale. Definitely one of the longer uh, setup things in GTA Online. Like, a lot of heists would take this long, but the thing is it's not exactly a heist. So we're taking the Armor Kuruma. If you don't have the Armor Kuruma, you are going to have to play this mission way, way different than I'm going to play it. Uh, but yeah, this was the part that earlier I just... Uh, instinctually <laughs> uh, went into this stunt jump here. But now we're, uh, we're going to the stunt jump and it's intentional this time. The other time we did not want to. We landed at that time as well. well we didn't land the stunt jump. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the armor crew motor right here, then get out of it and walk a little bit this way, trigger the cutscene, and then it's gonna spawn us inside of the rail cart and we are going to immediately, and I mean immediately, exit the rail cart and run back to the Karuma, which I parked too close. Dang it. So, uh, if you accidentally park the Karuma too close, like I just did, then you can see you are in danger. And you need to start snacking up and staying behind cover. I guess this is uh, fine, though, because I'll be able to show you guys what to do if you don't have a Karuma. Uh, can we actually call back in the Kuruma from here? Yeah, we can. Uh, but yeah, if you park it just a little bit farther, I just I parked it too close, and the mi uh, not the mission, the cutscene reset it. Yeah, you see where it, it got um, placed by the game? That spot's fine. Might be trapped now, though. Might be stuck doing it this way. Um, you know what? I'm going for it. So this is what I was going to do earlier. But as you can see, I parked maybe like a foot or two too close to it. So yeah, you're going to, when you spawn back in there, you leave, you grab your Kuruma, and then you just mow down everyone along the Kuruma. So yeah, just tiny mistake by me. It didn't actually cost me any time because I still took out the guys, and you have to take them out. So no time lost there, just an inconvenience in overall everything else other than time just a, a different way to do it that's how i can word it but yeah these uh vehicles they're driving are semi bulletproof so you will have to shoot them quite a bit and there we go now that we've taken them all out we can leave and go all the way down to lsa and that's the only part you really need the Kuruma uh, for for this mission, but if I had stayed in that um, that train cart the whole time, it would have taken me way longer. I'm glad I decided to leave when I did, because you're able to move around and stuff. Uh, if I hadn't parked the Kuruma too close, then uh, we would have done that even smoother. But since we did take some damage, I will take this moment to try to 
drive while looking at the top corner of my screen. <laughs> Not definitely something I would recommend, but there we go, we're full health. And it definitely is important that you are full health when you reach this part. Even if you're confident in your abilities, uh, still, just make sure you're full health. No matter what, full health is the way to go on this one. So, we're going to be just going through. And, uh, going to the checkpoint. I don't know why I'm spending extra time letting you guys know that. <laughs> I'm in my own head now. Not that. I mean, it was a mistake at the end of the day, parking too close. It just, it bothers me. Oh well. We're past it. And now I'm going to switch to the assault shotgun for this part. And you're going to go in here, taking out all the enemies you see at first, at least. This beginning part, you're going to want to take out every single one. Uh, you're going to want to blow up that before you get to it. Do not uh, go up to it without blowing it up. And then we're going to take out the guys up close with the auto shotgun. And even like medium range, there we go. And then we're also going to push up a little tiny bit until the car comes out of the plane. There we go. And then there's still a couple more. I'm going to heal back up to full. And there we go. The car is out. We're going to now take out these guys. Come on. Oh my gosh. That guy just dodged every bullet. And you do want to take these guys all out. Was I getting shot at? Oh yeah, from you. Okay, now that you've taken out those guys though, those are the only ones that I would recommend taking out, you're going to hop up here like I am, follow this exact route. And the reason you take them out is because otherwise they're shooting at you while you're doing this. And then hop over here. And then come around back. Hop down here. And then the moment that Johnny Gun spawns in, you're going to tap him a couple times. Do not spray him. Tap him. There he is. Tap, 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 tap. And the moment you see him falling, you stop shooting. You do not spray him, though. If you spray him, you risk failing the mission. And then you're going to just run up here and grab him. And that's the hangar done. And now we're in another cutscene. But this cutscene, I can actually keep audio on for you guys. Uh, it is another unskippable and decently long cutscene, but not like crazy long. I think it's like a minute, minute and a half, something like that. Less interesting than the last one, though. It, but it, it ties into the story. So I'll try not to talk too much during it so you guys can enjoy the cutscene. But you know what? Let's forget about that for a minute. The tracks in my phone, that shit leaked, my nigga. The shit is out there. But yeah, it puts good closure to the the whole missions. And unlike the last cutscene, there actually isn't a glitch to skip this one. So that's also worth noting. This one you're watching if you intend on finishing this mission. And at this point, we have uh, technically brought in uh, justice to Johnny Guns. And, you know, Dre gets to take out his anger here. <laughs> uh, but the mission ain't done yet. And this is where your GTA Online character gets to build a, a slight little friendship with Dre. Hey, listen. Now, I have audio off, so you won't be able to hear the song, but there's meant to be a song playing during this part. And for the whole rest of the mission, I believe. When I said this uh, cutscene was like a minute and a half, by the way, I think it's longer than that. <laughs> I'm just now realizing. Okay. This is a world premiere. Right here. Right now. So yeah, there's supposed to be music here, but we can watch them head bob in silence. <laughs> uh, 
when you play without the the music on it it's kind of like they're they're going crazy they've lost their minds <laughs> uh but yeah uh the rest of this mission is just driving dre to the uh the country club and i actually like how smooth of a transition it is from gameplay to this let's go and uh, there are some also unique voice lines for Dre when you uh, crash your vehicle and stuff. Which I think is very cool, very interesting. Like right now, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely one of the more fun parts of the, uh, the whole VIP contract. But we're pretty much done, guys. It's literally just a drive. There's nothing more to it. Unless somehow you fail the drive. Which I'm not saying is impossible. Everything can can happen, you know. You can fail a drive. But I think you'd have to be kind of trying to. I wouldn't imagine most people could accidentally fail this mission. I think water would be the, the only way is if you, like, drive it into the ocean. I think Dre also has health, too. So if you crash, like, way too many times, then you might fail it. But you'd have to crash a lot. We're just going to hop down here to save myself, like, one second. And here, you know, his custom voice line. And when I said save myself one second, I actually meant uh, take an extra second. Because we landed upside down. But if you don't land upside down, then you save a second. But this ain't a speedrun. or grinding. <laughs> so I don't even know why I'm trying to save a second. And then ended up taking a second longer but it'd be what it be we're pretty much done and we're just under that uh hour and a half i was talking about Take it easy. so uh that's cool and we're gonna park here get out and then dre wait i'm coming with you don't leave me don't leave me no i'm coming with you no i was almost in the helicopter guys don't leave me, Dre. I want to come with you. No, you're forgetting me. Please. <laughs> uh, I tried, guys. I tried to get on the helicopter. Spend some more time with Dre on the yacht. But we couldn't. Mission passed. VIP contract completed for a million as our final reward. Plus all the little stuff we got earlier. At the end, I'll be adding that up. But uh, yeah, the moment that this animation ends and we're able to move our character the grinding has completely ended boom there we go one hour 27 minutes 14 seconds for the vip contract now we're going to be grinding the cluck and bell farm raid let me reset the timer there start a new one and they have oh really walking through that missing the yellow circle uh but they have changed this heist or well, not heist a farm raid since uh, the last video I made on it. So yeah, now there is no more difficulty option. So I talked about being on easy difficulty because hard said it paid more but didn't, and they have fixed it by having no difficulty option. Now by default, all the missions are on normal and you cannot change that. It is no longer up to you. Everyone will be playing on normal, which, uh, Overall, it is a good thing. It makes the experience more consistent. Uh, but it also would have been nice if we could have gotten that uh, 1.5 times money for playing it on hard. I kind of figured, though, that it was not intentional to be that way. But I'm still surprised it took them as long as it did to patch it out. But uh, just in case you guys didn't see the last time I grinded the Cluck and Bell Farm Raid for the video when we put it up against the K.O. Perico Heist, I will try to explain everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. And if you skip to this point in the video and you didn't watch the VIP contract, I will uh, let you know now that we are not speedrunning this, we are grinding. And when it comes to grinding, you are trading your time for money. So we're not looking for the fastest routes available or anything like that. We're just doing it how I normally would. Sometimes when I grind, I'm like listening to music and stuff. So it's, it's more chill than speedrunning. We're going to back in here, take out all those guys. We're parking here because we're going to want to leave as soon as we exit because there will be enemies. When we hop in here, there's two guys to take out immediately. And then one more guy in here, which you don't have to run up and take out like I am. 
Um, because especially, you know, he doesn't want to come out, I guess. So we're just going to grenade him. Uh, but he'll come out on his own if you ignore him. I just didn't even want to wait. So yeah, from here, we're going to try to line up uh, the character, your GTA Online character, so they don't have to line themselves up when uh, when the animation starts. So if you just center your character and then put it like a put your character like a foot away from the machines, then the cutscene will go directly in. If not, your character has to do this weird walking around and stuff. So, tiny little time saves, but when you're grinding this mission, that type of stuff that is that easy to do is good to know. And as you can see, they were in fact waiting for me. And now we're going to head down to B and pretty much do the exact same thing. It doesn't matter which order you do these in, B first or A first. It's just my own personal preference to go for A. So, yeah, when we get to this one, it's pretty much the same thing, but you have to be a bit more careful where you park, because if you park too close, then you spawn on top of your vehicle. So, oh, I don't even know if I mentioned it, but we're using the Ocelot Virtue throughout this heist. And you can also use the Armored Karuma. Oh, I'm using the wrong weapon. Uh, I meant to be using the Tactical SMG. There we go. There's also this enemy vehicle that came over here. But we're going to park it a little bit away from the entrance there. Just to be cautious, because like last time, they'll be waiting for me. And we don't want them taking me out when I'm not even able to move or defend myself. And then, just like last time, we go in here, we take out these two, and there's a third hiding. I wish the third hiding would just come out right away, that would be nice, but it is what it is. And then, just like last time, we're lining up the character with the machine, so now we can get into uh, grabbing the cash immediately. And if you are worried about uh, dying on the way out, you know, before you're even able to defend yourself, you can also use snacks or body armor or both to make sure you have a little bit more health when you leave. But uh, I'm not going to. We're just going to exit out there, and I trust that I parked my vehicle in a good enough spot that we can get into it for protection before I'm in any real danger. But yeah, we actually were... Um, I think there's five total uh, machines that we got to grab cash from, so we're five for five on those. Nice. I believe the uh, the other video I did on this, it took us six minutes or six and a half minutes to complete the first mission here. So, so far I think we're about on schedule. My door of the Virtue just closed on its own. That's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, that being said though, uh, other than the, the obvious difficulty change with the Cluck and Bell Farm Raid, I also um, have been exploring changes to my route, which I, I even think I mentioned in the first one that my route could be improved, and since then I have improved it. Not like massively or anything, but you guys will see when we get to later parts, there are some things that I'm going to be doing a little bit different. But for now, we're just driving on back to Vincent's lockup. I'm just following the waypoint. There might be slightly better routes than what the waypoint's saying, but I'm not gonna bother about that, you know. We're just chilling, we're grinding. And being that we're six minutes now, I'm guessing we're gonna be six and a half <laughs> by the, the time that we're actually done with this. So yeah, oh my gosh, watch out for the bus. There we go. And we are now done with the first mission. We're gonna try to run away so my character doesn't have to be there. Ah, oh, I tried. I don't actually think you can get away, by the way. I was just joking around. But yeah, mission pass. We do not make any money. Oh, oh, another thing I should mention. I'm playing during a double money and double RP event week for the Cluck and Bell Farm Raid setup missions. So any money that we get from these setups, we'll have to half it at the end. And I will mention that at the end, too. 
because of uh, the event week because we want our results to apply to year round. But the finale is not double. It's just the uh, setups. So we shouldn't even be making that much money from the setups. And since we're not uh, tracking RP, the RP doesn't apply. But uh, that's why you'll see me earning a bunch of RP in these missions that usually do not give nearly as much. Because it is double. But yeah, I think our end result time uh, in the previous episode of this Versus series was 54 minutes? 54 and a half minutes? Something like that? So if we could get that time exactly, or even faster, ideally, that would be nice. But uh, I forgot to mention it, we are including time in between missions, like just there we were driving the Virtue, because... Um, even though that time isn't necessarily spent on the missions grinding them, it is still time that we are spending working towards getting back to doing the mission. So therefore we track it, because we can't be doing other things during that time. Uh, this mission, a little bit of RNG plays into it. There are different terabyte spawn locations as well as different laptop spawn locations. I think the terabyte spawn location plays a larger role than the laptop one. Uh, you can do them in any order that you like, but I'm going to do the laptop first. I think I did the terabyte first last time, but this time we're doing the laptop. So with the laptop, uh, you're going to go in and cause some chaos, and as you're causing chaos at the pier, you want to be oh, a little bit of a crash there, a little bit of a collision. But as you're causing chaos, you're going to be wanting to watch your mini-map. And on your mini-map, you'll see a red dot appear. And wherever that red dot first appears is where the laptop is. So I'm going to actually turn in. I think last time I went straight. This time we're going to turn in here and start causing some chaos now. And hopefully, there we go. They were alerted right here, and I think that's the laptop. Yep, right here. Gonna grab it. Nice and easy. And you can also get a little bit more RP if you take them out, if you care about that extra RP. I mean, it doesn't take any extra time, so... If you're all about that, then I would recommend taking out the guy. Just for the little bonus. Now we're going over to the Terabyte, though. And uh, the terabyte has, I believe, three different possible spawn locations. They actually aren't that difficult to find because you can just listen for the drones. But Vincent makes that a little bit difficult by talking while you're trying to listen for the drones. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Vincent ain't very helpful at this part. So, yeah, I'm going to try to listen for the drones. I think it should be to my right here. Yeah. So, gonna turn around my vehicle now. There we go, that's fine. And then I'm gonna be using the minigun. Yeah, I see it, game. Oh, it zapped me. Because the game messed with my camera. <laughs> Thanks! Thanks, game, for, for moving my camera directly above me so I couldn't do anything as the drone zapped me. Really appreciate it. But yeah, all the drones will spawn right above the terabyte. There will be one wave of three, and have one charge at you, and then you're done. And then in the terabyte, it's always in the same spot, to your uh, left here, and then right. If you can navigate the terabyte better than I can, you can probably save a half a second or something. And now, we are going to the train. I've gotten better at locating the... Uh, the guy, by the way, I should mention, since the last time, uh, so my advice from the last video still applies. You're going to want to go to the red box area, but I found that um, if you're fast enough, you can uh, just go directly to the guy that has the, uh, the key or whatever it is, instead of 
waiting for him to rotate over. So what we're going to do is actually drive our way up here. And you don't have to drive up here. I'm just going to. And now we're going to... Come on, weapon wheel. Don't be breaking on me. And it should be this guy, I think. Nope, not that guy. Did he go here already? I might have been too slow. Or too fast. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying a newer route. I guess I should have been waiting, though. Maybe it's this guy? Oh, it was this guy, yeah. So, I went a little bit too fast there. If you go too fast, uh, ironically, it takes too long. So... <laughs> Or not too long, but like longer. So it's not always the best idea to try to be super fast, I guess. But I think if I had been even faster than I was, like faster than too fast, you can hit like a, a sweet spot. But now is my favorite part of the Cluck and Bell Farm raid. We get to drive the train. Yay! We. I really, really hope that one of these days they add a mission where you get to drive it around the whole map. I don't even imagine it would be that difficult for them to implement since they've now implemented this mission. It would just be pretty much like adding on to this part, but instead of the like cutscene towards the end, you get to go through the whole map. I think that would be so cool, so much fun. Uh, we're also going to see if this time around, if I get to show you guys the car going flying, uh, or well, it's a truck, but when we get to it, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. But, uh,. There's only one guy that you got to take out during this entire route. The rest of the time is holding the acceleration of the train. And when we get to that guy, I will show you which one he is so you know to take him out. But the whole rest of this mission is just holding forward. And actually, we're getting to the point where uh, the helicopter is. And I'm going to mention this every time I do this, but why, if you're in a helicopter, are you parked in front of the train tracks? Just go up. Like, geez, come on. But yeah, up ahead here is the only guy we gotta take out. And he is right there. And we took him out. And if you do not take him out, then after you pass over right here, he looks back at you and shoots you through the window where you can see my character's head currently. So we're gonna see this, um, not this one here, but this uh, truck in the middle of the road is the one that we could potentially send flying. And I hope we can. Come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. And we didn't get it. Wow. I honestly uh, think they changed something. Because I was consistently having that truck fly off. Like, almost every time. And now I think I'm like four or five times in a row with it not happening. Because I have uh, grinded a little bit of the Cluck and Bell Farm raid between the, uh, the last uh, video. The last verses. So I've played a few times, that's why my route has changed, because I've been working on improving it. And I'm really hoping we can get uh, a better time. I think my best time ever was 52 minutes. If we could be that, that'd be amazing. But again, we don't make any money, just RP. And it's double RP than what it usually is. Uh, so with this, we're going to be using the Sparrow to get back to the V. And to call in the sparrow, we're going to look towards the highway and hope it doesn't spawn at the highway, because if it spawns at the highway, then you have to run all the way to the highway, which takes additional time. But as long as you make sure it doesn't spawn on the highway there, then you're chilling. You get to just have a, a peaceful flight back. And I already know where the V is, so that's why I'm heading this way. But once Vincent calls you here, you can hang up on him to see where the V is immediately, if you don't know where you're going. So yeah, uh, from here, it's just a, a chill flight. And we could potentially save a couple seconds by not landing the Sparrow and instead parachuting down, but you run the risk of messing up the parachuting, and there's many ways to mess up parachuting in this game. Uh, and then dying and having to run back on foot or anything like that. So I don't think the risk is worth the reward, but because I think I landed the helicopter last time, I think we're going to take the risk this time just to uh, switch things up a bit. 
So right about here is where I'm going to be hopping out. And then we're going to parachute on down there and see I actually almost crashed into the building. So that's why you got to be careful. But if you land on it, then uh, you can actually go without having to wait for your character to get up. But I didn't land on it, so we had to wait for my character to stand up. But yeah, it, it still saves time compared to landing the sparrow. And it's not like you pay insurance on the sparrow or anything, so if you're using the sparrow or a buzzard, probably just worth doing that. Uh, so this is the weapons that we're going to be using on the finale. And just like last time, I'm going for A. I have not changed my mind about that. A is definitely the uh, the fastest, and you don't need better weapons. I used to say like, oh, you need better weapons for hard, but hard difficulty is not a thing anymore, so you do not need better weapons. Unless you're like really struggling in this game, or you're like a really new player, then you do not need uh, C or B weapons. They're not worth the hassle. And... Uh, they are, uh, by the way, paying double, like I mentioned earlier this week. Um, so you can grab extra loadouts and bring them in for, for double money during events, event weeks like this. Uh, when they're not double, I would say never spend any time grabbing the extra ones. But when they're double, eh, it might be worth it. So uh, it's up to you to decide. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing it now because we're grinding this out and we're not grinding out the double money stuff so we're gonna drive up with the virtue for the first few guys trying my best to headshot them but the angles that you can shoot out of the virtue at are a bit odd uh, and we've taken out enough for i'm just gonna hop out and if the weapon wheel would work that'd be great we're gonna grab this not going to worry about taking out all the enemies because they don't pose like a massive threat to me. This guy would. And then we're going to start checking these. This is RNG. You can spawn in any of the three. And I'm hoping we can get it in the next one. We're going to take out this guy. Take out these guys as well, I think. And uh, who was shooting me in the back? You were. Okay, it's actually in here. So turn around quickly. Try not to die. No, it's fine. We'll just hop in the virtue. But I think last time I spent the time to take them all out, and I found that uh, as long as you know what you're doing and can do it quickly, it's probably not worth your time to take them all out. It's just a waste. Oh my. I just... I didn't even get hit there. I just turned too fast. The Virtue is slippery at high speeds. You gotta watch out for the wild NPCs as well. When, uh, when you have enemy NPCs chasing you, and they're causing chaos like this, the uh, the normal NPCs start driving like crazy, so you gotta be careful for them. Like, you see in this? And with the Virtue, it's not easy to uh, maneuver at high speeds. Very, very slippery vehicle. And I'm sure the more I uh, use the Virtue, the better I'll get at it. But I believe this is the first... Um, mission where I've like really dedicated the virtue as my grinding vehicle so maybe just the more I play the better I'll get with the virtue but the virtue is honestly a really really good uh, vehicle now we're gonna be texting Vincent to confirm our gear and then we're leaving Vincent goodbye you don't have to leave Vincent by the way you can just chill there but I'm doing this just cuz See how far away we can get <laughs> for no reason at all. That's another mission pass, though. And I believe this is the halfway point. There are three more now. And we are 21 minutes in. If only I could confidently say that we were halfway through the timer as well. <laughs> That'd be nice. You know, have a 42-minute time. Uh, for the in-between, to get back to the V, we're going to be using the Virtue. Because uh, you can call in the Sparrow on this one, but I think it's about the same amount of time. Depending on your driving abilities. If I get into too many crashes and stuff, then the Sparrow would have been faster. But as long as I'm pretty solid with my driving, then they're the same time. 
and when I'm grinding for extended periods on this game, then uh, I don't typically like to go out of my way. Just personal preference to be calling in additional vehicles when it's pretty much the same amount of time. So, yeah, we're just taking the virtue. By the way, uh, I should mention this because I don't think I made it very clear in uh, the last verses. Oh, I almost went past the V over here. Uh, let me just start this and then I can focus on getting a thought out of my brain, you know. But uh, we're, we're looking at the time it takes to complete these missions, so we're not factoring in cooldown. Uh, I got a couple comments about the cooldown, and most of my friends that play this game don't even play for long enough of periods to complete an entire mission from start to finish. And when you're grinding, uh, you probably typically are playing to complete at least one mission. And I understand that there will be people who are like, oh, I'm hopping on GTA for eight hours today. But when we're comparing these for the results, we're not looking at the, the cooldown times. We're just looking at if you were actively grinding, if you're only hopping on GTA for the one day and you're deciding which to grind. Because I'm sure a lot of people uh, can relate that maybe you can only play during the weekends or after your, your day at work or school or whatever's going on. And you don't realistically have time to be doing one Cluck and Bell farm raid and one VIP contract and one KO Perico heist and all that. Uh, but I should have mentioned it. You can probably already tell by now. But I am going for A for the getaway vehicle, whereas last time we took C. And it's because I found a slightly different route in terms of driving. And uh, it's going to follow the train tracks, which I knew you could take on the finale, even though I never really bothered to because I was taking C. Uh, but I just realized recently that you could also take them uh, from the getaway vehicle here and save a little bit of time too. So is this going to be the garage it's at? Yes, it is. I think it's ours here, but I just started doing this so i'm not going to confidently say that it's always at the same spot so there we go we're unlocking the garage and uh we could have gotten a van here by the way which is why i avoided it at the beginning because you really don't want to get stuck with a van but if you do get the van it's just slower but with this train track route that I'm going to show you guys that I changed. It doesn't necessarily save time, but what it does save is um, the uh, the having to stop and repair the vehicle. Also, that message, by the way, and if you're on PC, you probably already know what the message is, but it's uh, people uh, advertising bots. So that is not one of my friends sending me a message. That's not a normal player. That is a bot for a mod menu and they constantly advertise via messages so if you're wondering about that message so I'm really struggling to stay on the tracks here <laughs> you can probably tell though but see how we're not taking damage from the NPCs because they're obviously you know not following us on this route of the train tracks so that is why I'm now using A instead of C. It's just for that factor where we don't got to repair the getaway vehicle. But yeah, uh, kind of difficult for me to drive on the train tracks with this. When I drive on train tracks uh, normally, just with like a Night Shark or an Armored Karuma, it's pretty easy for me. But with this vehicle, which by the way, I don't even know what it is. It's a Tulip. It is quite difficult for me. I think it's because of the spacing between the wheels. So if I just stuck to one side, it'd probably be easier. No, it's even getting like flipped up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure as I do this more and more, I'll improve. But yeah, we don't have to repair it because we weren't getting shot at the whole way here. So that is 
one nice part about this. Let's not have to repair it because I'm crashing. What am I stuck on? Oh, I was actually <laughs> up on that. But, uh, yeah. And then we're done. We don't even gotta fight the uh, NPCs on the way back like we do with Option C. And that is why I am starting to, uh, to take the A vehicle instead. It's not because it's faster, it's not because it's better, it's uh, just purely because of that. And now for my least favorite part of the entire thing here. I really do not enjoy this part of the Cluck and Bell Farm Raid, where we have to not only exit the garage, which we didn't have to do at the other um, setup, but we also have to leave the area. Like, come on, you're really making me leave the area as well? They just did this to add extra time. They literally waste your time part of the mission. That's all it is. But there we go. There's a vehicle parked right outside the garage there, if you guys are doing it. So you can get away nice and easy. And that is another mission passed. We have two more missions to go. One is the last setup, and the other is the finale. And we are 20 mate, uh, 20 mate, 28 minutes in. Uh, this is uh, the farthest spawn point away from the V that you're going to have during this. So what we're going to do is look this way and call in our sparrow. Hopefully it spawns by my personal vehicle, which it did. And then when we get into the sparrow, we're going to call in the Kosatka to be able to fast travel. And I have not changed this, and I don't think I'll ever change it, because I have tried the Hydra, I've tried the laser, and... Uh, all those other things of getting down and the Kosatka fast travel not only is it more convenient like you can be a little bit lazy and just watch the cutscene instead of actively flying across the map but it is faster by about 15 or 20 seconds so I don't think I'll ever change this part of my route and if you guys aren't doing this and you own the Kosatka then it's worth the 2k but the reason I'm uh, putting so much attention onto this is because this 2k is going to come out of our total profit at the end. It has to, because it is part of the grinding expense that I do every time. Now it is personal preference. You can save the 2k, but in exchange it's going to take you that 15 to 20 seconds longer, and that's only if you're taking a, a Hydra or some other type of jet. If you're not even taking a jet, then it's going to take you way longer. Like if you're stuck with the Sparrow, or like even worse, if you're in a car, you're adding minutes onto your heist. Or I keep calling it a heist. It's, a, it's the Clock and Bell Farm Raid. It kind of feels like a heist. But at the same time, it doesn't. I don't know. I think it's because so many other people are calling it a heist that now it's like, it's getting in my head that it's a heist. It is not a heist. It is a farm raid. There's a difference. If you were able to, like, split the cut at the end with the other players, then I think it could be a heist. And if there were, like, more than just stealth approach and aggressive approach, maybe, as well. Or if the approaches were actually, like, labeled and you got paid more or less for each one or there was bonuses. Then that'd be cool. But there is Kosatka RNG as well that could potentially put you back like three seconds but if you're in an invite only lobby like i am which by the way i'm in it to save times between the loading screens they take longer if you're in a public session um but yeah you, you either get that spawn or the one that's slightly over there or over there um behind me by the way not in front <laughs> it's the submarine it spawns in the ocean but uh yeah those just add a couple seconds but if you're in invite only sessions like i am you should get the middle spawn every time but if you're in public lobbies, it's possible those spots are already occupied. So, yep, purchasing heavy armor, just like every other time. And uh, we are sticking to the aggressive approach. It has proven time and time again to be the fastest way to do this. Not only is it faster for the finale, which, by the way, I'll show you guys when we get to the finale, I found to make it a little bit faster using aggressive. But it is much faster on this mission here. So if you guys are stealthing this, like, obviously it's personal preference. If you prefer the stealth and it's more fun for you, or it's just your style, then go for it. But if you're trying to grind this for the money, then you gotta switch to that aggressive route. You're saving so much time. Like, I think it's 
a minute or two, depending on how quickly you uh, you are doing it. But for the start here, we're going to be going after the right van first, then the left van, because the right van runs away from where we're going next, whereas the left van goes towards where we need to go anyway. So that is why. And if you're right behind them, no matter what vehicle you're in, they can't shoot you. So just stay like right where I am now and you're fine. But since I'm in the Virtue, I was uh, going under them because it's fun. <laughs> That's literally the only reason I'm doing that. Just because have fun. Ooh, I almost missed my turn. But yeah, the other van is running this way, which is the way we need to go anyway. And same thing with this one. If you stay directly behind them, they can't hurt you. And if you're in the Virtue, you can go under them. There we go, and then we should be going this way. There's a few different spawn locations for the garage. Oh, uh, we could have actually kept going straight. I just, I trusted the waypoint, but the waypoint led me astray. I mean, look where it's having me go. I blame the waypoint for this. That was probably an extra five seconds, five second time loss because I trusted the yellow waypoint. Uh, by the way, so the thing with the car, uh, that happened last time. Uh, the way to get around it is just to call in your personal vehicle again from the interaction menu. So if your car glitches, then that's the way to do it. But yeah, uh, just like last time, we're grenade launching in. I've tried a mix of stealth and non-stealth on this mission, but it's honestly not worth it. And I have yet to die to my own grenade, even though I know eventually it's going to happen. But it hasn't happened yet, so until it does have oh, and then we're out of grenades, so. I used more grenades this time than last time. I don't know why. But we're going to take out this guy. If he would peek. But yeah, we actually lost like a millisecond because he didn't peek. But if he had peeked sooner, it would have been faster. And then we grab this. And we go grab the key card. And you can see the key card icon is displayed on this locker. I'm pretty sure that it's in this set of lockers every time. I haven't confirmed that yet, but there's a little bit of money. And it is double money, so we're going to have to half whatever we get. I haven't confirmed it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's always in this set of lockers. There's two monies, wow. Even though, there, wait, there was a time when I got it elsewhere, but maybe it's because I started elsewhere? Well, we're about to find out. If it's not in this, then ignore what I just said. But I think because the key card icon is there, it's in here. Uh, no, it actually wasn't. Okay, so yeah, ignore everything I just said. I guess I was just having some lucky streaks. <laughs> yeah, the last, like, three or four of these that I did, it was in that one every time. And I was starting to think that it was because the key card icon. But I just proved myself wrong. So yeah, we're getting quite a bit of money from this not by you know me wanting to get the money but just because it's how it's happening rng is not on our side today oh my gosh it's really not on our side we might even have to go into the other room please oh there we go thankfully we didn't have to go into the other room but that still took extra time but that's rng I know additional loot can be stolen from the lockers, and it actually is paying double right now. But even paying double, I don't think uh, it's worth it. Because they're just like individual bags of, I think, 1,000 or 1,500. And then double, you'd get 3,000. But yeah, if your vehicle is upside down ever during this part, then um, just call it in through the interaction menu. But when you're leaving the area, you always want to go down towards the uh, docks. Let me make sure I'm going the right way. Yeah, I am. And when you get down to about where uh, Simeon's docks are, that's when you lose them. And even if they do continue to follow you all the way there, oh my gosh, that was a bad, bad collision. Oh my gosh. Jeez, these NPCs aren't playing around right now. I could snack up, but I'm not going to. Wait, I've never had problems with the with uh, those NPCs. 
they just they got me really good there. But yeah, when you get down here, this is where you you lose them all the way by where Simeon's garage is. And it works for all the locations, all the different garage locations that you have the potential of getting. Um, but on some of them, the NPCs will continue to spawn even down here, and then you just gotta do circles. But there we go. Like I said, once you get to right around the garage area, that's when mission's over. And now we only have the finale left. So we earned 18k there, but this is during double money. So that is actually only 9k that we're adding to the value at the end because we want our results to reflect the year round. But uh, yeah, for the finale, we're not taking the sparrow or anything, even though uh, you could take the sparrow. It's the same boat as earlier where it's on your driving skills. So if you're confident in your ability to drive, then drive. If not, take the sparrow. But at the end of the day, they're about the same amount of time. And the V won't be there until Vincent calls, just like every other time. But if you know where it is, then you know where you're going, then you can just head there. So yeah, uh, we're 38 minutes in. So if we could have a 14 minute or less finale, then we're looking to beat my personal best. Even though we're not speedrunning, so I shouldn't be mentioning things like personal best, but we're just grinding. I haven't actually attempted to speedrun the Cluck and Bell farm raid yet, although I might in the future. Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, scene of the crime. Final mission. You will see some differences that I do in this one versus the last time I did the finale. That I've just, uh, I've gotten a little bit more comfortable charging through pretty much on the aggressive route to try to save additional seconds. So you're going to see that. So we're going to stop that guy from closing it. And then after those two are down, we're going in. And we're going to reload while this opens. Move around so they have a harder time hitting you. These guys, unfortunately, though, you probably should take out. Just because they can get you in the back. There's one more here. There we go. Reload again. And then we're going to take out this guy who rushes, and then this guy, and this guy. And then we're going right into swiping. And I think last time I was still fighting at this point, so... We're going to run down here. They will be waiting for me on the outside. But I know that they're going to be waiting for me, so we can be prepared for it. So we'll take out this guy, and then start grabbing this stuff. Just like the laundry machines earlier, we're lining the character up. So we get right into this immediately. And before exiting out of here, you can put on um, armor and uh, snack up. So I'm going to do that just to show that it's probably a good idea lead by example because they will be waiting for you during the aggressive approach at least right when you leave i haven't actually died to them yet and normally i don't heal but i'm healing this time just in case we don't want to be set back uh and then one other thing i found that i will explain when we get to it but in the next room uh it isn't actually rng like i thought it was so uh I started looking at uh, every time I was doing the heist, I was watching my footage back and realized that it was never in the, the front crates. So it's in the back crates on the next part. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we get there. So yeah, they're waiting for me. But like I said, they were going to be. And as long as they're not posing a threat to me, we're going to scan this, swipe it, whatever. And you see... Some more time saves. I'm getting a little bit better. But yeah, so, uh... There will be... Come on. We're gonna grab this crowbar, and then... This one's up front. This one isn't, so... Because this one isn't up front, it should have a thing in it. Yeah, there we go. And then, because this one isn't up front either... It... Oh my gosh, I fit through that? Wait, do you guys see what I just did there? <laughs> Wait, that's actually so cool. But yeah, it, it isn't RNG. You, you just go for the ones that aren't in the front. You go for the back ones. And you eliminate that RNG element out of it. 
Now we're running through here. That is a spawn point, by the way. Right there. They will keep respawning. There should be a guy back there. But I didn't see him, so... There he is. He came out late. Dang it. I wanted to take him out. There's that spawn point already coming into play. We need a reload before peeking this. There can be one to two guys here. There's usually a guy here, but there wasn't. Oh, he's over here, that's why. Shoot out this lock. Grab the hacking device. And the hacking device with the weapon wheel lately has been so annoying. I don't know if they changed it or it's because I'm trying to go faster than I was previously with the aggressive route. But weapon wheel plus this hacking device is a nightmare. So we're going this way. Oh, there is already a the weapon wheel showing this thing. I don't know why I'm shooting that. But it should be this one. Yep. Uh, we'll take out this guy. And then we're going to... The this one? Yeah, this one. Um, hello? Oh, it's actually this one. There we go. And then which one? It's this one. Weapon wheel actually worked that time. There we go. And now we're gonna look at the safe code here. Uh, 87, 72, 74. 87, 72, 74. 72, 74. And 74. Pretty simple code. You can get harder ones. Like, And by harder, I just mean they take more turns. Uh, and then for this part, you're only... Oh my gosh, there's a guy here. You're only worrying about the helicopter. Nothing else. So once you take out the helicopter, that is when you get going and you run out this way. But you should definitely take out that helicopter. And then there's two guys back here that you should also take out. Just because they pose a threat to your immediate entry and exit. There we go. And now we're not in a, a C tier vehicle this time. But I'm going to show you guys the, the route here. Now, I knew that this route existed, but uh, I didn't know it existed for the, the earlier setup. But now that we're taking a weaker vehicle, a vehicle that does not have the armor, like the, um, the, the C vehicles have, we're taking this way out. I do not believe it's faster. I actually believe, it, if anything, it's either the same speed or slower. But because we do not have that armored vehicle from taking a C-tier vehicle, we're leaving out this way. And I really cannot drive on the train tracks with this thing. It is sliding everywhere. I mean, we're still making decent time. But it's way more difficult than I... I've had <laughs> with other vehicles. Oh my gosh. There, we'll just go on the side for now. Why wasn't I doing this the whole time? Well, we can't here. Oh my gosh. I almost went flying. I mean, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I flew off the, the train rails here and had to go out of the canyon, but whatever. It could have happened. And again, I want to be kind of careful here. Don't want to go flying. Maybe I was just going too fast. Oh. Maybe I was just going too fast, guys. <laughs> uh, it's like, not that I want to slow down. I think you start losing the cops uh, around here if you leave out it this way. Whereas the other way, you lose them about the prison. Yeah. So we're just going to stay around here, see where the helicopter spawns. There's typically a helicopter. Yep, there it is. So we're going this way. Because the helicopter's over there. And we might actually be able just to continue going this way. I don't want to get spotted by the cops like we had happened last time. I crashed into one after I'd lost them, but I think we're good. Yep. Or wait. I thought I lost them. Okay, now we lost them. There we go. And guys, uh, with that, I am going to 
uh, confidently say that we are going to beat my personal best. So, as you can see, I changed up uh, how I do things. I took the aggressive, I think the big change was that. I took the aggressive route more aggressively. Uh, obviously, taking A as our vehicle here uh, is not the best for this mission, the finale. But, I do think saving that extra like 20 seconds or 15 seconds, whatever it was, um, to not have to repair the vehicle during that setup, that definitely helped a lot. And, uh, not, um, like last time we also, uh, had to lose the cops twice. I forgot that also played into a role. But, yeah, uh, guys, I'm really happy with this time. I'm really happy. And it's gonna give our, uh, Cluck and Bell farm raid a better score than what we got last time with it. I mean, we also grabbed more money than last time, too. But... Other than uh, those two changes I just talked about, I think I'm just getting a little bit faster at everything else in general. So over time, you know, we'll hopefully keep improving. And I mean, the same could be said for the VIP contract too, uh, because there was a point in time where I was grinding the VIP contract uh, when it first came out, but I haven't recently, so that was definitely not my best time. I even said it was about average or maybe slightly... Um, faster than average but this is a really good cluck and bell farm raid time a really good one. Oh no we might be crashing here i saw it coming but i couldn't do nothing we're almost done guys just a little bit more but yeah uh, i have a massive smile on my face because that is just it's nice to know that i'm improving it's always nice to make progress. And now we're going to leave Vincent, just like we did previously. <laughs> we're running away with the stuff. Bye-bye. We'll be on our way this way. There we go, guys. There we go. Wow. We're beating my personal best by probably a whole two minutes. Really happy with that. We'll have to see, obviously. The timer doesn't stop just yet. It stops when we're able to move again and be back doing our own thing. But there it is, 500k. And now that they removed the hard difficulty option, it will always be 500k, unless it's like a double money event week or something. But yeah, the moment that this animation ends here, and we're able to move our character right now, 49 minutes 41 seconds wow nice now let's look at the results to be able to grind the vip contract the agency property is required every free mode setup that i did i earned 10,000 for a total of 60,000 the nightlife leak paid 10,000 the high society leak paid 16,000 the south central leak paid 10,000 and studio time paid 7,500 for a total of 43,500. Lastly, the finale paid 1 million for a total profit of 1,103,500 in one hour, 27 minutes, 14 seconds. That is about 12,650 GTA dollars earned per minute of time spent grinding. For the Cluck and Bell farm raid, there were no requirements, but I did fast travel with the Kosatka one time for 2,000. I earned 9,000 from the Disorganized Crime Mission and 500,000 from the finale for a total profit of 507,000 in 49 minutes 41 seconds. That is about 10,205 GTA dollars earned per minute of time spent grinding. That makes the VIP contract the winner with it earning me about 24% more GTA dollars per minute of time spent grinding. Before I get into my thoughts, I wanted to mention a couple things for the people that did not watch the grinding. For the VIP contract, everything went as usual except for me dying once during the guest list mission, which set me back about 30 seconds. For the Cluck and Bell farm raid, I took the aggressive approach with A for weapons and A for getaway vehicle. Not only did everything go smoothly, 
but I even set a new record for how quickly I completed it. Now for my thoughts. Going into this, I had a suspicion that the VIP contract would win, but I thought it would have been by a bit more. Perhaps I could have used some more practice to shave off time since I haven't recently grinded the VIP contract, whereas I have been frequently grinding the Cluck and Bell farm raid. It is also worth noting that I found the VIP contract much more fun to grind compared to the Cluck and Bell farm raid, mostly because it had a lot more switching between free mode missions and mission lobby missions, making it not feel as repetitive. Owning an agency for a 24% increase isn't enough to make me recommend rushing to purchase for new players, but it would pay for itself just in that 24% extra over time if your only other option was grinding the Cluck and Bell farm raid. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace.